Welcome back to California Forest News. In this episode, we'll learn how the U.S. Forest Service and our partners are returning low-intensity fire to California forests in a process known as prescribed fire. If you recall our last episode, this type of low-intensity fire can create resilient forests and reduce the threat of high-intensity wildfire. Let's visit a prescribed fire on the Tahoe National Forest to learn a little more about prescribed fire, starting with the different types. Generally, there are two types of prescribed fires, pile burning and understory burning. Like the name implies, pile burning consists of burning piles of hazardous fuels. Understory burning, also called underburning, consists of fire personnel spreading ignitions across the forest floor within set barriers. Even more than pile burning, underburning really simulates the low intensity fire that the forests here in the Tahoe National Forest are adapted to. The goal of an underburn is to remove the hazardous fuels that are building up along the forest floor. I'm standing right now in an area that's been previously treated with prescribed fire. And you can kind of tell some black on the tree. Now that we've learned a little bit about the different types, let's check out the steps that are required to implement a prescribed fire so we can end at a condition like this, a much more open, resilient forest. First, site-specific environmental analysis is completed for each proposed prescribed fire. This analysis is completed by an interdisciplinary team of resource specialists and includes public input. Often, the area is pre-treated prior to a prescribed fire as well. This may consist of ecological thinning or rearranging the hazardous fuels into piles like we spoke about earlier. Next, a burn plan is written and approved. The burn plan provides specific operational instructions and specific conditions, known as the prescription, by which the prescribed fire will be allowed to proceed. The area of a prescribed fire is also surrounded by containment barriers. We make every attempt to use natural features, such as a rocky ridge or a pre-constructed feature, like a road or a trail. If those don't exist, firefighters will prep an area by creating fire containment line, fire line. When constructing the containment line, hazardous fuels are removed down to bare mineral soil, just like wildland firefighters do when stopping the progression of a wildfire. Our environmental analysis is now complete. We've pre-treated the area, we have a burn plan, and the site is prepped. What next? Now we wait for the required conditions of the burn plan. This might include the weather. It can't be too dry, but it can't be too wet, and it also can't be too windy. Fuels officers and burn bosses closely monitor the conditions of the fuels prior to a prescribed fire. The ideal fuel conditions are one in which the fuels will fully consume, but enough moisture in the surrounding area to protect resources. In addition, it takes the availability of trained wildland firefighters to manage a prescribed fire. The alignment of the available resources to manage a fire, along with the prescriptive conditions, the weather and fuel conditions, we call our burn window. All right, now we have a burn window. What happens next? On the day of the prescribed fire, the burn boss implements the requirements of the burn plan. This includes a lot of public notifications, emails to our local communities, social media posts, signboards placed out at intersection alerting the public of a prescribed fire, and other types of notifications. After that, the burn boss gathers all resources to the burn site and conducts a briefing. Briefing topics include the burn's objectives, safety plans, the plan for holding and igniting the prescribed fire, as well as upcoming weather predictions and patterns. Once all personnel are briefed and the weather is checked one more time, it's time to light a test fire. The burn boss and other personnel will observe the test fire's behavior and effects to ensure it will meet the burn plan's objectives. That's it, we're here. We're implementing a beneficial prescribed fire. 
The prescribed fire will continue until all resource objectives are met. This could be all day, even into the night. Weather is continually monitored during the burn period, as well as the fire's effects and smoke dispersal. Firefighters also continually patrol the perimeter of the prescribed fire to make sure it stays within the containment barriers. After all ignitions are complete, firefighters stay on scene for several more hours. Firefighters will continually visit the prescribed fire over the next several days to continue monitoring conditions. As you can see, planning and implementing a prescribed fire is a very complicated task, but precision is necessary to maximize benefits while minimizing risks to firefighters, communities, and natural resources. As always, thanks for watching.